Hi, this is Joy at Ben Franklin Bonnie Lake. Today we're going to show you how to make this colored tea light lantern out of a mason jar. Before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about the alcohol inks and the differences between the colors. On this one, I used uh, a light color of an alcohol ink called Juniper. And on the one we're going to be doing today, I'm going to be using Cool Paris. It's also a light but I'll show you what it looks like to use a bright color. The colors become much more bold and less transparent um, because of the color saturation. This is the red, here's one in an orange, and they're just much more bright and bold. There's also another um, category called earth tones, and they're just more earthy, um, some are dark, some are light, just a different tone. But for today, we're going to be using the light Cool Perry. So today we're going to use the light Cool Perry. It's kind of a light uh, purple, bluish, lavender color that we're going to be using to color our mason jar. So again, you're just going to take your alcohol inks, dab it on your sponge applicator, and these tend to be really soft and very transparent. So as you're doing them, you may not think that you're getting color on, but they go on um, just so, it's such a nice, soft tone. As you can see, kind of getting a little bit of color, just pouncing the applicator over and over again. And as I'm doing it, if I want it to be a little bit darker, I can go around a second time after it dries and it just intensifies the color a little bit. So we're just gonna go around again. The alcohol ink dries so quickly that it really makes this a super fun, easy, quick project. Because as the alcohol evaporates, the colors become permanent. It's um, a great project for those of us who don't like to wait around watching things dry. Plus it makes it super easy, there's no other product that you have to use to get it to dry. It just as a simple application and then you're done. No reapplying a sealant or anything. Unless it's going to be outside in the rain, you might want to add a sealant to it. Okay, so this is what it looks like with two coats. And if you wanted it to be a little bit darker, you could go back and do a third coat um, for the color saturation. But um, the lights are really designed to be a lighter, just more transparent color and have less intensity. So um, if you're wanting it to be more intense, you'd want to pick a bright color or an earth tone. So when you're all done, just go ahead and uh, I suggest putting a piece of white paper underneath just to check for any gaps or spots that you might have missed. Because the color is so light, sometimes the white paper just helps those to show up a little bit better. As soon as you're happy, then we can move on to making the lantern. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make the handle for the lantern. So the now, size and the gauge of the wire that you use will depend on what you're using it for. If you're going to use it outside and be hanging it from branches, you'll want the gauge to be much thicker than if you're going to simply put it on a table. This gauge we're using today is a nice thick gauge uh, that we can bend easily with our fingers and yet it's very strong. And the length that you'll be using will also depend upon where you're hanging it from. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I got the measurement that I did. Today we're going to be using a pint size mason jar. So all I did was take my wire and I measured it twice the length of or circumference of my mason jar. And that seemed to give me enough to work with to make what I needed to start with to make the loops. And just snip it with your wire cutters. This is not an exact science, it's just all about kind of eyeballing it. So the first one you're going to do is, is go ahead and take about a third of your wire and kind of make a little bunny ear loop right here. Just twist it. Then you're going to hold it to one side of your mason jar and take the other side. You're going to do it exact opposite side over here and then you're going to want to make another kind of a bunny ear loop with your wire. And 
then you can hold it back on your mason jar and take this the, the ends over here and give them a nice twist and then you have the loops ready for your handles and then just take your wire cutters and snip the end off over here. If it's a sharp edge you might want to take your uh, other tools, beading tools, wires, and just kind of bend that down so it's not a sharp edge. And there we have the loops. And then your handle is going to be dependent upon how long you want your handle to be. I'm just going to take one side and give it a twist. Mold it and bend it till it's about the size you want it to be. Give yourself a little bit extra for the loop. Feed it through. Again, give it a twist. And there. There it is. You can kind of adjust it however you want it to be centered on there. Now, once you're done, it's ready to um, put your candle or tea light in. We have a really fun product called Acrylic Gems. And these are a great filler. As you can see in this one, I've just poured some gems in just for the base. Shoot them down a little bit. Put my tea light in, and it's ready to go. Now you can embellish it with a bow or anything else that you have um, to make it festive to go with your party decorations, or you can just leave it plain. This is Joy at Ben Franklin Bonnie Lake. Thank you for joining us making these mason jar tea lights. Thanks for stopping by.